But the, the, the groups to whom Jesus addresses these parables are, on the one hand, tax collectors and sinners who find in these parables a, a welcome from God. They find that God is actively searching for them and God has already found them. But on the other hand, the, the other group that is, is listening to these parables is the Pharisees and the scribes. And they're angry. They grumble at Jesus because he would say these kinds of things to these sorts of people. People God doesn't really like at all, you see. And so they think themselves superior. And after this parable that I read for today, the parable of the manager, it says uh, the evangelist describes, again, the Pharisees as lovers of money. So here we have bookends to these four parables, and it's the Pharisees, grumbling lovers of money. That's the wider context. So when Jesus is done telling this parable of the lost, or rather, the found sons, he turns then to this, this strange parable. And we don't even really know how we should describe the manager. I mean, on the one hand, he's dishonest. Really. I mean, there's just no way around it. He cheats. And he cheats his, his, his boss. He cheats his master. And if, if, if we can accept the way that the parable begins, he's been doing it for a long time. And the word has come back to the, 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 the master that this manager is squandering his property. Heaven forbid, squandering his property. And he calls the manager to account. He says, what's this I hear about you? You better show me your books, dude. I want to know what's going on. And the manager knows that he is out of a job. So what does he do? He cheats his master a little more. Why not? His thinking is, I can't dig. I'm too proud to beg. So I'm going to make myself a, a kind of a, a golden parachute of my own. And I'll come out of this okay, and these people who I have helped out here will welcome me into their home. So he fudges the books again. And he doesn't remove the debts of the debtors. He just lessens them. That way, the manager still gets some of what's owed to him. And the manager accrues, some, the master gets some of what's owed to him, and the manager accrues good feeling from these people who owe less than they did owe before. Now, we might think that the, mas the master would simply look at this and say, Aha! I knew you were cheating me. I knew you were squandering my property. I knew you were a dishonest manager. This just proves it. This is the icing on the cake. This is all I need. But what does he do? And it's very surprising. He commends the manager for being shrewd. Not dishonest. Shrewd. Now, there's a huge difference between those two words, dishonest and shrewd. On the one hand, dishonest means unfair or, 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 or uh, cheating or unfaithful or untruthful. And then shrewd, on the other hand, means wise or clever or smart or astute. And even if we want to think of shrewd in negative terms, it still comes far short of the negative terms of dishonest. The manager commends, or the, the master commends the manager for taking care of himself. And Jesus says, that's the way the world is, friends. People take care of themselves. They do what's, what's good for them, regardless of what it may cost others. They do what's good for them. And you would be wise, he says. I can't believe it. He says, you would be wise to follow their example. Winning friends by dishonest riches, so that when they're gone, as dishonest riches always are eventually, when they're gone, you 
will have welcome in the home. The word is not tent, but not homes, it's tents. You'll have welcome in the eternal tents. <coughs> Now, I think the evangelist realizes after he's written all this down, there's a problem here. How am I going to deal with this? Because this is not consistent with anything at all that I've ever written about Jesus. And so he takes these other sayings of Jesus and adds them on at the end. If you're faithful in little, you'll be faithful in much. If you're unfaithful in little, you'll be unfaithful in much. If you're unfaithful with dishonest riches, who's going to give you true riches? You can't serve two masters. And in that way, I think the evangelist is trying to soften this idea. But I think that really what he's done is misunderstood Jesus. What Jesus is doing it, and this is my opinion. I'm the preacher and I get to tell you what I think. <laughs> what Jesus is doing is saying it isn't really possible to be honest in a dishonest system. And don't, don't make a mistake about this. The world that Jesus lived in was full of dishonest systems. There were only two classes of people, the very rich and the very poor. Nothing in between. And the people who were rich got their money by cheating the people who were poor. By owning them and everything that they thought that they might have owned. And Jesus is saying, this manager is simply doing what anybody has to do in a dishonest system because he can't be honest. And survive in a dishonest system. And I think that's one of the lessons of the, 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 the parable of the manager. You can't be honest in a dishonest system. I think he's also saying, the evangelist and Jesus, are also saying that, <coughs> excuse me, I want to get this right. That there's a difference. There's a difference between the things that the world values and the things that are valuable in God's vision. 